people. Um, so the thing is, we talked about dreams, and I always knew that I wanted to make an impact and I wanted to be a doctor. It was just, it was always going to happen, and it was my dream to be a doctor. And I said I, was, I, said I might not get, I might get emotional on stage, um, but when I became a doctor, the reality didn't match up to what I thought. Um, and the reality is, is that my background is in acute medicine. So people that you've lost in your life, the people that have been ill, um, I'm the person that has jumped on their chest or put the big needles in their neck. And the reality is, is that acute medicine is incredible at those things. It's, it, you cannot replace that. But the fact is, is that we don't have the time or the resources in the system that we have to be able to see the person as a whole. And for me, wanting to try and achieve the best that I could, I always felt like I wasn't doing my best. And it wasn't really until I had my own health challenges and my own setbacks, and I basically hit burnout. I was working 30 to 60, I was working like 120 hours, I was seeing about 30 to 60 patients a day. And really it just, I came to a halt. And in that moment, I had to reassess my own health. And then in that, I then basically went on a trajectory of learning everything else. And then I learned nutrition, I learned environmental medicine, I learned yoga, I learned about mindset. And really, when you look at health, it's all the like non-tangible things. And it's the community that you hold. Um, and so for me, it's just, it's so natural to be in this environment where we are looking at people as a whole person and not just a set of symptoms. Fantastic. Really, really hectic, right? And we, we're constantly on the go all the time. And the more and more and more I studied, I could hear the truth from the people, the patients in front of me. I could see the truth in people's eyes and I could feel the truth and now I can smell the truth. And each time that happened, it took me back to nature. Every single time it took me back to nature. And I feel like we're so disconnected from nature and our community. And so I know that when I look at someone, I know that to get a superior outcome for that person, I need to look at non-pharmacological interventions as well. Um, <laughs> So, you know, you're clapping me, but the thing is you should be clapping yourself because the reality is, is that you are taking your own sovereignty back by using these oils. You are literally, like, have health right there in front of you as a way to check in. Um, and I'm not saying, I'm here as a doctor, but I'm not saying they're here to treat, diagnose, prevent, or anything like that. But these oils are like the glue. They put everything back together. And we know that plants have been used for a millennia. We know that in conventional medicine, the drugs that we use are derived from plants. So at the end of the day, it just seems, there's no conflict here for me. It's just a natural part of health and well-being. Um, and for me, living in alignment, it's, you know, what I want to teach or, you know, talk to people in front of me, I need to be able to do the same. And I use the oils every single day. I literally just doused myself with oils before I came, so yeah. So why doTERRA in particular? Um, so doTERRA in particular, again, I studied and I looked for the most reputable company. And at the end of the day, they are transparent, you know, they have a quality oil. But the thing is, as I said, it's not just about the smell that they produce, right? It's the fact that you're in the driver's seat and I feel like they just empower people to check in with themselves. And as a doctor, sometimes when people are in front of us, they lose their sense of sovereignty. They feel that they don't sometimes have choice or they can speak up. But I really feel that when you start to use the oils, you also start to have other behaviors and that has this ripple effect on your health and the trajectory of what you do. So doTERRA, just love everything about them, love their co-impact sourcing. So yeah, that's why doTERRA. <laughs> so we just launched the oil turmeric. Who's excited about turmeric? Hectic lifestyle, um, we have constant stresses. We're always in a reactive um, place. Yeah, people have their mobile as their third hand and ultimately at the end of the day 
we are under pressure. And what I find is that emotions are felt indirectly. They're felt indirectly through your heart pounding, your sweaty palms, your hands shaking. And when, we, when that happens, we can also get the, um, the sympathetic nervous system basically jumps in. And what I mean by that is we have a system called the HPA system. And the HPA system is our hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And it basically sends off this cascade of hormones. And one of the hormones is cortisol. So when you get this injection of cortisol into your body, you're in a fight or flight. And all your body wants to do is move away from a perceived stress. It doesn't even have to be a real stress, right? It could just be like an emotional stress. And when it does that, your body just shunts blood to three places. It shunts it to your brain so that you can think about your next move. It shunts it to your heart because then it's going to send the blood straight up to your muscles and that's the other place. And so when we're doing that, stress is actually not a bad thing. Like before I got on this stage, I was definitely stressed and my sympathetic nervous system was up. And so, you know, athletes and people like that, they use stress like that in good ways and it's called eustress. But the issue is, is that we don't have recovery. We don't, um, we don't have a reset button and we don't recalibrate and then essentially get homeostasis, that balance. And so now, because we're living these hectic lifestyles, we're essentially just in chronic allostatic load. That's a medical term. And so we get this kind of constant, like, can't switch off, like monkey mind going. And so really at the end of the day, we've got to start resetting and checking in and feeling what our body is saying to us. And one of the amazing tools is using an oil. It's a tangible thing that you can say, actually, how am I feeling today? And you can go across your oils. And that allows you to say, oh, my body has got pain or, you know, I feel fatigued. And so that's what it means when you are stressed. Fantastic. So I guess turmeric is a very big uh, personal favorite of yours. Can you share about that? Mm, yeah, I've spent a lot of time in India. It's where I did my yoga teacher training. Um, Turmeric's all throughout India, it's used in all their cooking, and I just love the turmeric essential oil, it's so grounding, so yeah, I love it. Great, so the next oil that I want to talk to you guys about is pink pepper. Who's a fan of pink pepper already? Yes! So when we think of pink pepper, we think woodsy, we think spicy, for me I think about food flavouring, but I guess uh, pink pepper is a really great one uh, for emotional resilience. Uh, Nicole, can you talk us through the chemistry? Yes, uh, this is another one that we were very excited to get our hands on when we first got the samples. Um, and then just that video that we saw this morning about the pink pepper harvesters. Um, who loves that? I've seen that, I don't know how many times, and every time I just, I'll start crying a little bit because it's such an amazing story. And the chemistry, the chemistry is just as amazing to boot. So what I really have been interested to learn about essential oils in general is that often there's just a single precursor molecule that gives rise to all these different kinds of constituent molecules, right? And so you're going to have all kinds of things that you're, you're probably familiar with, lime and knee, alpha pine knee. The one that's most prevalent in pink pepper is one called alpha phalandrine. And it, again, comes from this precursor molecule. But the interesting thing is that the plants in their natural environment, they can kind of use these different building blocks and create molecules or break down molecules as they need to, to better adapt to their environment. And so as we were looking at the chemistry of pink pepper, and we were seeing this high level of alpha phalandrine, the highest that we'd seen in an essential oil so far, we were very excited because this particular plant was using that as an adaptation to better fit into its environment. And so, you know, the idea being, like Amy was talking about, we've used plants for millennia. We, we've evolved with them. Humans and plants have evolved to work together. So the fact that the plant can use these precursor molecules and build them up or break them down to better adapt to their environment, it just, it makes a lot of logical sense to us that they would be a benefit to humans for this idea of, of resilience. So can I just ask for some audience participation? Not only are you having an effect on your emotions, but you also have then a physical effect on your body. 
So you mentioned the limbic system. I'm wondering, Victoria, can you explain to us a little bit about what that actually is? Yes, so the limbic system is the part of the brain responsible for emotions and creating memories. Um, for young people, it's their default setting, so they react to life based on how it makes them feel. For all of us, if we start to feel a little bit um, uncomfortable or stressed, then that brain stem gets activated. So that's the part that activates the fight, flight or freeze. So when we're feeling uncomfortable, um, you sort of consider younger people who are often on an emotional roller coaster anyway. For them, when their um, brainstem gets activated, they can experience that cascade effect that Amy mentioned. So I'm feeling really excited about Pink Pepper. It's a great one that you can add a few drops.